Welcome back to the Bloomberg Google Hangout. I'm John Allen here at the U.S. Africa Business Forum. We're in the center of the forum with the CEOs, the heads of state, uh, lots of interesting people here, and included in that are two that we have on set. Uh, Vanessa Kaitchis, the CEO of Columbia Green Technologies, uh, Ahmad Shatila, the uh, CEO of Sun Edison, and joining us remotely from an undisclosed location, well, undisclosed to me anyway, uh, Franny Leotier, uh, the CEO of Macoba Private Equity. Franny, thanks for joining us. Uh, and I'm Thank sorry. you. It's a pleasure, John. I'm told we, uh, you're in Toulouse, France. I should have read my notes. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're in a better place than we are. Yeah. I mean, the Africa Summit's good. Now, I think the, next time they should hold it, hold it in Toulouse. The sun is shining. It's bright. It's very nice and warm here. <laughs> Uh, tell me a little bit about the idea behind uh, Macoba, which I understand means big purse. Uh, what, tell me about your private equity firm and what the what the idea is there, and how it uh, how it ties in with uh, with green investments and sort of and the future of Africa. Well, in in Africa right now, about eighty percent of the jobs are created by the private sector, and the majority of the private sector is small and medium enterprises, and they are therefore responsible for most of the job creation that we see. So we created this fund uh, to support the growth of small and medium enterprises because they have a hard time finding capital from banks because they tend to be quite risky in terms of their appearance to the banks. They don't have very proper accounting. Their business strategies are not always very well thought out. So our fund helps uh, build capacity, supports these companies to have good business strategies, uh, look for new markets, uh, look for mergers and opportunities to work with bigger firms, but also to grow across countries and have a regional business. And, and our fund also helps them uh, leapfrog technology using technologies that are better for the environment, particularly in energy and in other production methodologies. And the last area that we focus on is to support companies that are able to impact the food chain and have other value-adding opportunities, particularly in agriculture. Because agriculture remains one of the key focus areas for Africa. And so when you link up transportation and logistics, energy, and, and all the other supporting infrastructure that is needed for a company to succeed, we find ourselves really at the heart of what Africa needs in order to develop and use the private sector to get results. And Ahmad, you're, uh, you're based in San Francisco in the Bay Area. Yes. Uh, curious what the, uh, in terms of green investing in Africa, where's the, what's the best place to do that in terms of, uh, in terms of region, in terms of particular types of uh, power technology? What's, what's the wave of the future? Well, let's uh, step back and think about Africa. 900 million people or more, 600 million with no power. So it's a huge opportunity. Where we have been successful in South Africa, and now we are investigating and starting to invest in West Africa, in Senegal, in Ghana, in Nigeria. So that's where we see the business. But frankly speaking, it can be anywhere. It simply can be anywhere. Is it just that much opportunity? Huge opportunity, absolutely. And Vanessa, what do you, th what do you think? Is it, do you agree with uh, Ahmad in terms of uh, the opportunity there? Or do you see places that are better, worse, technologies that are better, worse? Yeah, well, we at Columbia Green focus a lot on the green building, the actual building of the infrastructure and green infrastructure. And we see Africa as a great opportunity because as they build out, they'll actually skip a lot of the current antiquated systems that, that countries like America have or in other places. They'll That's skip that, right over. That term that Franny just used, leapfrogging. Leapfrogging, exactly. And they'll do that. They're doing it in mobile. They're going to do it in power. They'll be doing it in the building design when we come in and design new buildings, for example. How do we make sure we develop these buildings and infrastructure, energy plants, uh, grids that um, have low impact on the environment, but build these great places for people to live and work? So it's a, and we need the investment uh, in the finance to be able to put those in places for the large companies. We go in with companies like Dow to help build it out. Uh, but the smaller companies are also there, part of the slide chain that we need to make sure we finance and get going as well. There's so much uh, money in the legacy natural resources, not the sun and the wind, but the, uh, you know, mining and oil and uh, gas. Is, uh, is it difficult to get uh, countries and companies in, the, in some of those countries to move away from that, or do they see uh, or their investment opportunities obvious to all? What's the 
What do you think is the balance of the future in terms of those extractives? Okay. Both of you, all so, of you. Franny, you're also welcome to join in as yeah. well and to hang out on that question. So we focus a lot on infrastructure. So what are the pipes to manage water runoff, storm water? When you build out a city or a building, what are the infrastructure? And because Africa, here in America, for example, the pipes in New York City date back to the 1800s, so they don't manage it well. When you go into places like Africa, we get the opportunity to build better this time. I think you heard Andrew Livers from Dow doing smart cities. So how do we build infrastructure? So that here in Africa, we get to surpass that and actually build like green infrastructure to manage water versus old pipes to manage water so that they make smart cities so we can expand and grow over time. So we see that from an infrastructure building standpoint, just like, again, leapfrogging. How about you guys? Well, first of all, I want to agree with Franny and uh, Vanessa about one thing, although it goes counter to my business. The cheapest source of energy is not using it at all is designing buildings and infrastructure that is efficient by nature, like Franny said, leapfrog, and, and build buildings that are more efficient. We are able to raise capital significantly enough for Africa when there's a good project, and good project has to have, in, in a country that has good regulation, no corruption, and a contract that will be protected by law. There is billions and billions of dollars. Actually, we were able to spend hundreds and millions of dollars the last two years in Africa on infrastructure. So the money's there. And Freddie, I want to ask you about uh, investing uh, in particular uh, through private equity. Uh, what kind of metrics are you looking for uh, when you make an investment and what kind of safeguards are you looking for from a, a government in terms of uh, not corrupt in terms of contracts that are stable, in terms of governments that are stable. Uh, obviously, there are some countries that are very, very stable in Africa and others that have uh, had a lot of political turmoil in recent years. Hmm. Well, John, we're investing uh, in uh, nine countries and they happen to be amongst the fastest growing economies in Africa. So you look at Ethiopia, uh, Tanzania, Rwanda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Mozambique, South Africa, uh, Ivory Coast, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. So these are the nine that we are working on. And when you look at these countries, you notice that all of them have had a significant improvement in governance over the last decade. They are also improving in terms of the business climate, particularly around protecting property rights. So these are the things that we look for from government, that when you hold land title, it actually holds. Uh, also contracts and, and honoring contracts and being able to have those be secure over time. Uh, and of course, the support in the regulation around uh, investments that take multiple years to come to maturity. And, and the, the uh, energy sector in particular, but also transport and other sectors. So what we see as, as big opportunities are using the revenues that come from extractive industries to build sustainable cities, for example. So smart cities, sustainable cities, using the revenue to, to do that. But also when you look at the extractive industries themselves, they rely a lot on supply services that are, are local. And turning the footprint of these supply chain uh, support to extractive industries, whether it's in the transport area, all the food services that go to support, for instance, the offshore oil rigs, where there's food and water being delivered, waste being collected. All these have an opportunity to be rendered much greener and, and more productive and more efficient. And so when you look at the ecosystem around the extractive industries, there's a good opportunity to make that valuable uh, over and above the investment in those industries themselves. And we see a lot of mining companies and companies involved in extraction looking for interesting partnerships on the supply side with companies that have a much more efficient and cleaner approach to, to production, whether it's for food and services, but also for supporting uh, infrastructure for the extractive industry. Amal, so we see big opportunities. Amal, what do you hope to get out of this, uh, this summit? Well, you know, I just want to get a feel for the commitment of the leaders in the African continent about regulation, like uh, Fran is saying. At the end of the day, Business is easy if we know the rules, and the rules are legal. And I just want to get, get that sense. Also, I want to see the support of the U.S. government for investments, albeit the support of Exim Bank in the long run, USAID, uh, OPEC, which we actually were the largest partner in the world with them for renewables. That, that's what I'm looking for. 
Right, uh, Ahmad Shatali uh, from Sun Edison. Shatila, I'm sorry. No problem. From Sun Edison, uh, the CEO. Uh, Vanessa Kaitis, uh, the CEO of uh, Columbia Green Technologies. And Freni Leotier, uh, the CEO of Macobe Private Equity uh, from Toulouse, France. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and we will be right back with another Bloomberg Google Hangout from the U.S. Africa Business Forum. Thank you, John. Thank I'm you. So Thank you very sorry. much. Thank you.